Live from New Delhi, you're watching DD India Live, India's Voice to the World. I'm Siddharth Bharadwaj. Coming up in the next 30 minutes. Delegations from Israel and Hamas head to Cairo for Gaza talks. Ceasefire on agenda as conflict enters seventh month. Mexico suspends diplomatic ties with Ecuador. Move after police raided its embassy in Quito to arrest former Ecuadorian Vice President Jorge Glass. Campaigning in full swing for the first phase of India's general elections. India's PM Modi addresses mega rally in eastern state of Bihar. And in Indian Premier League, five-time champion Mumbai Indians to take on Delhi Capitals, while Lucknow Super Giants to face Gujarat Titans. While beginning with updates on Israel-Hamas conflict, delegations from Israel and Hamas will head to Cairo on Sunday in the hopes of reviving stalled ceasefire talks. This comes as the Israeli government is under increased international and domestic pressure to reach a deal with Hamas to release hostages being held in Gaza. Deed India's Alex Kadia reports from Tel Aviv. Well, very, very high stakes for that ceasefire talks meeting. We know that all the senior players will be present. On the Israeli side, you have David Barnier, the head of the intelligence agency, the Mossad, and Ronan Barr, the head of the security agency, Shin Bet. On the uh, other side, Hamas sending its deputy leader to these negotiations, mediated by CIA director Bill Burns and by uh, Qatari and Egyptian officials. The pressure absolutely on. Joe Biden has told uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Benjamin Netanyahu to give his negotiators room to operate, room to strike a deal. We also know that he's asked uh, the Emir of Qatar and the Egyptian president to put significant pressure on Hamas to do the same and come to these talks constructively. Now we know that the previous two deals proposed by Israel has been have been rejected by Hamas, who said they were basically the same thing. The structure of the deal would be 40 vulnerable Israeli hostages, women injured and elderly, released in exchange for 700 Palestinian prisoners, 100 of which are serving life sentences here in Israel. Now the sticking points remain. Uh, Hamas demanding the full withdrawal of Israeli troops from Gaza. That uh, is not going to happen, say Israeli officials. They also want a longer lasting, what they call a comprehensive ceasefire. And Isra again, Israel saying they will only do six weeks. And that has been negotiated in for months now and finally the last sticking point where Israeli officials say they can be flexible is the return of civilians to northern Gaza they say they will allow more the other aspect of this is the US pressure on Israel to allow more aid to flow into the Gaza Strip and to um, uh, have a pause in the fighting particularly as we've seen a 47 year old Israeli hostage's body has been recovered uh, just in the last day he was kidnapped on October 7th killed according to the IDF in January in his body buried in Han Yunus in Gaza only recovered by Shin Bet and the IDF so clearly for the families of those hostages for the civilians uh, starving in Gaza time to reach a deal is running out Alex Kadye in Tel Aviv reporting for DD India Israel launched airstrikes on eastern Lebanon early on Sunday, hitting what it said were Hezbollah infrastructure sites after the armed group downed an Israeli drone over the country. Both sides continue to trade fire amid escalating regional tensions. The Israeli army in a statement said that fighter jets struck a military complex and three other infrastructure sites belonging to Hezbollah in the eastern city of Baalbek. It said the latest attack was in response to Hezbollah's downing of an unmanned aerial vehicle in Lebanese airspace, which the group identified as the Israeli-made Hermes 900 drone. Hezbollah has been trading fire with Israel across Lebanon's southern border since October 8. Now, Israel's army on Saturday released footage, it said, showed the targeting and destruction of tunnels operated by Hamas in the southern Gaza city of Khan Yunis. The army in a statement accompanying the video said that the tunnels had been uncovered in the past with one dating back a decade. In addition to the three tunnel-like structures, the Israeli Defense Forces claimed that a Hamas-run excavation workshop was also destroyed. 
and the Joint Operations Command of the Ministry of Defence announced the implementation of the 26th airdrop of humanitarian aid and, and relief aid as part of the Birds of Goodness operation. The United Arab Emirates Ministry of Defence released footage on Saturday reportedly showing its air forces dropping humanitarian aid parcels into northern Gaza in a joint effort with Egypt. Two UAE C-17 aircraft and two Egyptian C-295 aircraft participated in the airdrop operation. Over 80 tons of food and relief aid and supplies were dropped over isolated areas in northern Gaza. As part of an international effort to help set up a new humanitarian maritime corridor, a British Royal Navy ship will supply aid to Gaza. The multinational effort involving the United States, Cyprus and other partners will develop a new temporary pier off the coast of Gaza. British Foreign Minister David Cameron pledged $12.26 million for aid equipment and logistical expertise to help set up the maritime corridor from Cyprus to Gaza. The initiative will see aid pre-screened in Cyprus and delivered directly to Gaza through the new U.S. temporary pier being constructed off the coast or via Ashdod port after Israel agreed to open it. Now, it has been six months since Hamas fighters broke through from Gaza into Israel on 7th of October, killing about 1,200 people and taking hundreds hostage. UN Chief Antonio Guterres once again condemned the attack and called for the unconditional release of all the hostages. The 7th of October is a day of pain for Israel and the world. The United Nations and I personally mourn with Israelis for 1,200 people including many women and children, were killed in cold blood. Nothing can justify the horror unleashed by Hamas in October 7th. And I once again utterly condemn the use of sexual violence, torture, injuring and kidnapping of civilians, the firing of rockets towards civilian targets, and the use of human shields. And I call for the unconditional release of all the hostages still held by Hamas and other armed groups. Well, the United States says it's preparing for a possible Iranian attack in Israel or the region. U.S. officials are warning it could come in retaliation to Israel striking the Iranian embassy in Syria. Dean India's Nick Harper sends this report from Washington. Have a look. Well, U.S. officials are reportedly in a state of high alert. There is significant concern that there will be an attack within the coming days. U.S. officials say they believe an attack is now inevitable and they think that attack will be significant, uh, saying we are definitely at a high state of vigilance. Now, they're not sure, or at least not saying, where that attack could take place. But the potential, they say, is either within Israel itself or against American targets within the region. Uh, all of this coming off the back of an Israeli airstrike, not confirmed by the Israelis, but the thinking is that they carried it out on Monday in Damascus on Iran's embassy. One of the top Iranian commanders were killed. Iran also saying that another seven people were killed during that attack. Now, obviously, that created a major escalation in terms of relations between Israel and Iran. And the fear is that after a couple of months of uh, significant calm within the region, there could be this potential of a flare up. We've seen, obviously, the Israel Hamas conflict continue. But when it comes to other Iran backed actors, in the region, Hezbollah, and also the Houthis in Yemen, it has been somewhat quieter during recent weeks. So concern now from US officials, enough concern that the US President Joe Biden, when he spoke to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Thursday, did discuss this and discuss the possibility of it taking place and how uh, they would potentially deal with the fallout from it. Because it's now a case of if we were to see this attack, how would the US and Israel respond? Concern that this could create a significant problem within the region, could create a significant escalation in tensions between Iran, Israel and the US. In Washington, Nick Harper, reporting for DD India. 
Now, Russia and Ukraine waged a tug of war in attacking each other's military targets. Russia on Saturday attacked the Ukrainian military industrial enterprises, while Ukraine hit Russian military targets. The Russian Ministry of Defense reported on Saturday that the Russian army utilized long-range precision-guided munition and drones to attack on Ukrainian facilities. The general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces reported that it concluded strikes and conducted, in fact, on 14 locations where Russian air defense system was stationed. Now, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky hopes that he and Swiss counterpart would set a date for a world peace summit in Switzerland with 80 to 100 countries. Russia has said such a meeting would be pointless if it did not participate. Kyiv had previously proposed a world peace summit but said Russia would not be invited. Zelensky said in a television interview that he and the Swiss president would have to agree on the date between them and then send invitations to the world leaders. All right, news from Mexico now, where Mexico has suspended diplomatic ties with Ecuador after police raided its embassy in Quito to arrest former Ecuadorian Vice President Jorge Glass. Nicaragua has also joined Mexico in cutting all diplomatic relations with Ecuador as a fragrant violation of international law. Glass, convicted twice for corruption, had been holed up in the embassy in Quito since seeking political asylum in December. Glass has been accused by Ecuadorian authorities of embezzling government funds meant to help rebuild after the devastating 2016 earthquake. He has now been flown under police guard to the city of uh, Giaqui and is expected to await trial in a maximum security prison. Meanwhile, Glass says he is the subject of political persecution and had been sheltering inside the embassy. Glass served as Ecuador's vice president between 2013 and 2017. He was relieved of his duties because of mounting corruption allegations against him. Later that year, he was sentenced to six years in jail in connection with the corruption at the Brazilian construction giant Odebrecht. Meanwhile, citizens in the streets of Quito and Mexico City expressed disappointment with the diplomatic problems that have escalated between their governments over the last days. Mexicans mostly disapproved of the reaction of Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador, arguing he wasn't complying with Mexico's non-interventionist foreign policy with his actions. Arrest of Ecuador's former Vice President Glass sparked outrage in Mexico City with suspended relations with Quito. News from the United States. Former U.S. President and Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump appeared at a fundraising event in Palm Beach, Florida on Saturday. Republican president candidate Donald Trump's campaign made a major fundraiser in Florida, raked in a massive $50.5 million. After arriving at the event, Trump promised that change would come very quickly once he regained the presidency. The event, slated to be his biggest fundraiser yet, is a much-needed opportunity for Trump, who's been routinely outraised by Biden and is in the midst of a financial squeeze due to ballooning lawyer fees and legal payouts. Meanwhile, U.S. President Joe Biden's re-election campaign raised over $187 million in the first quarter of 2024, almost double what it took in during the previous quarter. Well, in Slovakia, Peter Pellegrini wins the presidential election, defeating Ivan Korchok. Peter Pellegrini received 56.7% of the vote in Saturday's runoff election, topping former Foreign Minister Ivan Korchok, who had 43.3%. This election result propels Pellegrini to be Slovakia's sixth president since its independence from Czechoslovakia in 1993. The outgoing president, Zuzana Chaputova, known for her support of Ukraine amidst Russian aggression, chose not to seek re-election for the largely ceremonial role. Although Slovak presidents who wield limited executive powers, they can veto laws or challenge them in the constitutional court. They also nominate constitutional court judges, potentially shaping political conflicts over FICO's reforms, which aim to reduce penalties for corruption. And the Train Drivers Union of the United Kingdom, ASLEF, has launched a new round of strikes which is expected to impact most railway services in the country. 
The Houston railway station was affected by the strikes. The station looked extremely deserted on Friday morning with only a few passengers. A dozen train drivers gathered outside the station holding banners and slogans to express their complaints. According to the union, train drivers under the union have not received any pay rise since April 2019 and many people have been experiencing a living cost crisis as product prices in Britain have soared due to the effects of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. This round of strikes was scheduled to be held on Friday, Saturday and Monday, impacting operations of 16 railway companies. According to Rail Delivery Group, the strikes held from June 2022 to January 2024 had caused £775 million of economic loss to the country's railway industry. And to continue discussions on economic front between the U.S. and China, U.S. Secretary of the Treasury Janet Yellen met China's Premier Li Chang to discuss economic relationship between the two countries. Both the leaders emphasized to work together and make progress directly and communicate openly. And 30th anniversary of Rwanda's genocide is being observed today. The genocidal activities commenced after the assassination of the President of Rwanda. Over 800,000 members of minority Tutsi community were killed in the Rwandan genocide that occurred from April 7 to July 15, 1994. India's Secretary of the Ministry of External Affairs, Economic Relations, Damu Ravi, represented the government of India at the event, marking the 30th commemoration of the Rwanda genocide. India's MEA Secretary, Economic Relations, is on a three-nation visit of Rwanda, Uganda and Kenya from April 7 to 12. As part of the week-long national mourning, Rwanda will observe solemn events with flags flown at half-mast and restrictions on public activities like music, sports, events and movies. The United Nations and the African Union will also pay tribute to the victims of the genocide. All right, still to come on this edition of DD India Live. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses a huge public meeting in Nevada in India's state of Bihar as campaigning in India's general election is picking up pace. World Health Day is being celebrated today. April 7 marks the founding of the World Health Organization. Kevin De Bruyne claims his 100th goal for the club in a comeback victory at Crystal Palace. The land of Dravidians, Tamil Nadu goes to polls in one go. How will the National Party's alliance face the political heat with the regional satraps? What are the issues that could find resonance among the voters as India decides? Will the vote share increase help the National Parties get a foothold in the minds of the people? Watch Why Tamil Nadu Matters on the Great Indian Election at 8.30pm IST and 1500 hours GMT only on TV India. You're watching DD in Life. I'm Siddharth Bharadwaj. Let's now get you the latest on the world's largest democratic election in India. Campaigning in India's general election is in full swing. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed a huge public meeting in Nevada in India's state of Bihar. Saluting the land of Magad, the Prime Minister said that what he guaranteed ahead of the previous elections, he stood by his promises. Modi ne Bharat ko aankh dikhane walo ko sabak sikhane ki guarantee di thi. Natija? जो भारत को आंख दिखाते थे अब वो आटे के लिए भटक रहे हैं मोदी ने गारंटी दी थी कि अयोध्या में राम लला का भव्य मंदिर बनेगा आज अयोध्या में भव्य राम मंदिर का शिखर आसमान छू रहा है जो 500 वर्षों में नहीं हो पाया जिस राम मंदिर के निर्माण को रोकने की कांग्रेस और आरजेडी ने बरसों तक कोशिश की 
वो राम मंदिर बनकर तैयार हो गया PM Narendra Modi's next stop will be East Indian city of Jalpaiguri during the day where he will address a mega rally. PM Modi will also travel to central state of Madhya Pradesh where he will lead a road show in Jabalpur. Also the Communist Party of India CPI released its manifesto for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections on Saturday. CPI General Secretary D Raja along with senior leaders released the manifesto in New Delhi. While releasing manifesto D Raja said CPI will form the government with left progressive and democratic forces and will work to ensure decent minimum wages to all laborers He added the party would seek increased funding to create a health and education infrastructure which is accessible to all And Uddhav Thackeray's campaign got a fresh setback ahead of the Lok Sabha elections as former Maharashtra minister and deputy leader of the Shiv Sena UBT Babban Rao Golap joined the Shiv Sena led by Chief Minister Eknath Shinde. Golap joined the party in the presence of Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde, State Minister Dada Bhuse and Deputy Chairperson of Maharashtra Legislative Council Neelam Khore. Shinde said two more MLAs from Rajasthan will join the party in the next two days. Golap is a five-time MLA from Nasik district of Maharashtra. All right, some more election-related news now. Congress president has approved the proposal for the formation of the campaign committee of the Rajasthan Pradesh Congress Committee for the general elections 2024 with immediate effect. The All India Congress Committee on Saturday approved a 32 member campaign committee for the Lok Sabha elections in Rajasthan. All right, let's take a look at other stories making news today. An earthquake of magnitude 4.3 on the Richter scale hit the Andaman Sea during early hours on Sunday morning. Similar earthquakes tremors of magnitude 3.4 were felt in Kargil, Ladakh during late hours on Saturday night. Several coaches of Vishakhapatnam Amritsar Hirakund Express train were damaged after a high speed car broke the closed railway crossings and rammed into the train in Anuppur. in central state of madhya pradesh according to reports one man has lost his life in the incident kaziranga national park and tiger reserve in india's northeastern state of assam also saw an increase in footfall summers are here and people are flocking to scenic areas for a time off Amid the rising temperatures in plain areas of India, people from different states flocked to India's northern state of Uttarakhand's Nainital to escape the unwavering heat where people could be seen enjoying boat rides and scenic landscapes. Well, some weather news now. People in Paris ditched their coats and jackets as temperatures are set to reach higher in April. The weather authorities warns the temperatures to mount and reach up to 30 degrees Celsius in the south of France. Experts claims that warmer weather is due to warm air masses continuing to circulate over much of Europe. France to break the record of warmest April this month. Airline passengers in parts of the United Kingdom and Ireland faced travel disruption at the airports on Saturday due to flight cancellations as a storm swept across both countries and left thousands of Irish homes with power outages. The disruption caused by storm Kathleen has affected flights at airports across Ireland and the UK including Manchester Airport and Belfast City Airport. In Scotland rail and ferry services were also affected and faced disruption due to storm Kathleen with Scottish rail services implementing temporary speed restrictions earlier in the day strong winds associated with the storm also had led to a number of power outages across the country with approximately 34000 homes farms and businesses impacted All right on to sports now A fit again Surya Kumar Yadav will be expected to immediately deliver the goods when faltering Mumbai Indians and Delhi Capitals lock horns in a bit to arrest their side in Indian Premier League clash in Mumbai on Sunday. Surya Kumar's potential return to action will keep him at the sinusore having spent the last 3 months nursing an ankle injury and recovering from a surgery for sports hernia. The world's premier T20 batter Surya Kumar hit the ground running with his first training session at the Wankhede Stadium. 
with three losses in a row. MIR languishing at the bottom, whereas Delhi Capitals have spiraled down to the ninth spot in the 10 team points table, falling 106 run hammering in their last match. In another Indian Premier League match, Lucknow Super Giants will clash with Gujarat Titans in Lucknow on Sunday. Both the teams have won two matches each for this season. For Lucknow Super Giants, Nicholas Puran, Quinton de Kock and KL Rahul are in red hot form. With the bat, Moil Mayank Yadav, Naveen Ul Haq and Mohsin Khan are the highest wicket takers for Gujarat Titans. Shubman Gill and Sai Sudarshan are the top scorers, while Mohit Sharma holds the purple cap at the moment with seven wickets. Both the teams have played four IPL matches against each other. Gujarat Titans have won all the matches. Well, earlier on Saturday, Rajasthan Royals on Saturday defeated Royal Challengers Bengaluru at Savai Man Singh Stadium in Jaipur. Josh Butler along with Captain Sanju Sampson routed RCB bowlers after RCB set them a 184-run target. Butler and Sampson stitched a 148-run partnership for the second wicket as the chased look alike a cakewalk. Butler smashed unbeaten turn in 58 ball while Sampson scored 69 of 42. Earlier, Virat Kohli slammed his 8th IPL century and 1st of 2024 edition. He scored 113 not out of 72 deliveries and added 125 runs with skipper Favre du Plessis. But 183 was never going to be enough as they never really upped the ante. For Rajasthan Royals, spinners Yuzvendra Chehel took two wickets. He along with Ashwin never allowed RCB batters to change their arms freely. With this win, RR go 4-0 up and top of the table. In an era marked by unprecedented challenges, the value of good health has never been more apparent. World Health Day is being observed every year on April 7th. This year, the theme of the celebration is My Health, My Right. Has a brief report. World Health Day is being commemorated every year across the globe. On April 7, annually, the day is observed in order to raise awareness about global health issues and highlight the importance of well-being. The theme for the World Health Day 2024 is My Health, My Right, which focuses on the fundamental human right, access to quality health care, education and information. The origin of World Health Day goes back to 1948, when first health assembly was held by the organization where it was decided to commemorate April 7, also the founding day of the World Health Organization as World Health Day. To celebrate this day, people from around the globe come together to promote a healthier world for everyone. It serves an important platform for raising awareness about important health issues and advocating for equitable access to healthcare worldwide. From AI-driven diagnostics and wearable health devices to remote patient monitoring, the future holds a promise for revolutionizing how we deliver emergency medical services. In today's rapidly evolving healthcare landscape, it is essential to champion patients' rights and drive innovation that puts the individual at the center of care. The day underscores the importance of primary healthcare facilities and availability of clean water. It also highlights the health challenges and focuses on the health facilities that should be provided to a human being. Good health and well-being are important and fundamental to leading a healthy and fulfilling life. It encompasses physical, mental and social well-being, enabling individuals to contribute positively to society. Nitendra Singh report, DD India. That's all for this edition of DD India Live. But let us know your thoughts on the news of the day. You can connect with us on Facebook, X formerly known as Twitter and Instagram. We'll be back with more news as it breaks here on DD India. I'm Siddharth Bharadwaj from all of us here in Delhi. Thanks for watching DD India Live. Namaskar.